Hello and welcome to this 2020 LD4 conference presentation entitled The Relevance of Linked Data Beyond Our Walls. The walls in this case being the walls of the library in particular and cultural heritage in general. My name's Richard Wallace and I'd like to thank the conference organisers for inviting me to present. It would have been really nice to be all together in Texas but hey you can't have everything under the current circumstances. In fact, I'm recording this, but I, was, I wish it was live, but I am recording it because at the time of the presentation, I'm going to be in the countryside of Cheshire, a county in the northwest of England, uh, circumnavigating something called the Cheshire Ring, a, co a collection of canals in, in Cheshire and South Manchester. And I'll be on, on this boat here, which is a... 69 foot which i think is 21 meter long canal boat or canal barge the traditional way of, of getting around canals in, in in the uk um so um you'll have to forgive the stilted presentation as one always gets when you're recording these kind of things uh, but i think being on a 69 foot barge uh wins out in the race of um what, what would i rather do today anyway for those of you that don't know me, my name's Richard Wallace, as I said, and I'm an independent consultant and evangelist for linked and structured data and founder of my own consultancy, Data Liberate. I've been in computing much longer than I care to own up to uh, uh, and around cultural heritage technology since the early 1990s and the semantic web and linked data since their inception, really. Uh, I work within several W3C community groups. I chair a few in, in various areas from bibliographic data, archives, to finance and tourism and, and education, etc. My, my clients include Google. I work with them with their contribution of scheme, to the schema.org vocabulary, much of, more about later in this presentation, working on the, the, the site, its extensions, documentations, and general community engagement. I uh, occasionally work my, with my former employers, uh, OCLC, uh, and, and many other organisations, including the Financial Industry Business Ontology Group, are, are into structured data and, and linked data for banking, etc. Work for various clients, helping them understand and Im implement schema.org and gain benefits from it. These include the British Library, Stanford University Law, Europeana, and the National Library Board of Singapore. Anyway, less about me and, and, and more about what we're here for. I'm going to start and dive straight in. We haven't got a lot of time, so a lot of the preamble will be assumed and you know what BibFrame is. I'd radically say that BibFrame is a, is a good thing. Well, it's been a good thing since 2.0. Um, it, it became, in, in my understanding, a usable uh, vocabulary, linked data vocabulary at that time. Uh, people ask me questions about bid frames and say, is it the only linked data vocabulary for bibliographic data? No, it's not. There are others around. Uh, I'm not going to list them now. As I say, we're short of time. You know them. Is it the best one of those? Uh, probably not. Um, 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 if something's a good vocabulary, is is kind of a personal decision. Um, but uh, I, I don't think it's probably the best either. Uh, is it university loved by librarians? Uh, definitely not. Uh, man, many librarians dislike it intensely. Uh, there are a few that love it, but never mind. Uh, is it power of lots of powering lots of systems yet? No, uh, even though it's been represented in the development paths of, uh, of many systems, it's not powering the core of, uh, of them yet. Does it satisfy most bibliographic linked data use cases? Well, yes, there are a few edge cases and we see some extensions being talked about even in this conference uh, about uh, beyond the core uh, of BibFrame. But most of the uh, linked data use cases, it does satisfy. Is it recognised and supported by systems uh, developers? By some, but it's a bit patchy. Is it a de facto international standard? Well, it's, it's becoming so, I think you'll find, in the, at least in the library world. Is it supported by a wide c consensus? Well, if you don't want to narrowly define what that consensus is, yes, it is kind of 
supported by a wide consensus. Um, so most systems developers would would admit as a minimum they they must in their development plans be able to import BibFrame because there's going to be a lot of it about. They must be able to export BibFrame basically so that doing both of those means that their system can uh, play in the global cooperation across libraries that are using BibFrame as a linked data exchange format in the same way that they must be able to handle links in, in, in markets. It's all about connecting things. Uh, we have marked to BibFrame conversion specifications. We have marked to BibFrame conversion scripts available. And by implementing these, it enables the entification of data. We're moving from a record-based world into an entity-based world. And anything that aids that process is good. In fact, I would say, regardless of whatever your target vocabulary is for linked data, the most important step on the road to linked data is that entification process. Uh, so it delivers a route from mark records to linked data. Uh, as everybody would admit, the vast majority of bibliographic data in the world is in the form of marked records. And unless we want to rush off and rekey all that data, we need a route to get from those marked records into uh, linked data in a usable form. Uh, and that route is uh, signposted, if you like, from the Library of Congress BibFrame site, giving links to the conversion specification and the conversion program uh, as they evolve over time. Uh, and, and a link to uh, a comparison viewer where you can pull in mark records from the Library of Congress uh, and display them as they would be converted uh, to BibFrame in uh, a couple of different uh, RDF syntaxes. So th this is all working within the walls of our libraries, within the walls of, of cultural heritage. This is definitely uh, a, a, an inward looking uh, process uh, and, and this work has been going on for many many years linked data has become a bit of a holy grail for the library community uh, we've been striving for it for many years I've been to many conferences uh, as linked data has been described of where we need to end up uh, and when I talk to people uh, about this holy grail I asked them, you know, what do they hope to gain from this? What do they, what, achieving this holy grail will deliver what? Well, one of the, the most common answers is a better catalogue. A, uh, a better catalogue is, is, is a bit of an amorphous term, uh, but some people believe that when you've converted to linked data, cataloguing and the catalogue it produces will be better in some form or other. It should deliver intuitive searching. Again, a bit of a uh, difficult one to pin down, but I think we, we all know what that kind of means. Authoritative auth authorities, a bit of a mouthful, but basically instead of copying authority data all over the place, we link to the authoritative source of that data. Works by searching. I think this has got something to do with the intuitiveness referred to earlier on, but uh, there, there are examples where searching for, for works and then drilling down to instances and examples of those works uh, does seem a, a, a lot more human-like. Uh, and this would deliver a, a better public user interface. Uh, better, again, is, is, is a bit amorphous, but I think we know what we mean here. Uh, and often that is referred to being Amazon-like. Um, it delivers a knowledge graph. This is different in a way to the, the other uh, ambitions, if you like. It's sort of harking into what other organisations across the world are doing about amassing uh, linked entities information, which uh, would be known as a knowledge graph. And it's going to deliver visibility and discovery on the web. I suppose the word enhance should be in there somewhere. And I'm not that convinced. It may be that enhanced visibility and discovery will happen within the library. But as to being in the wider world, I think that's, that's pushing it a bit. Um, so what's going on outside the library world uh, that are, if you like, driving the ambitions inside the world? 
So let me look at structured data on the web today. And a really good example is the recently in introduced Google Dataset Search, a specific search interface uh, enabling you to discover data sets that are openly published on the web. So I'll doing a search within there for bibliographic lists um, bibliographic data sets um, and the top of the, uh, the pile here is Harvard Library bibliographic data set uh, and as well as a link to the data set itself we've got uh, who it's provided by what license it's under description etc following the link it takes us to the Harvard data verse in which the uh, Harvard Library bibliographic data set resides and here's all the information you uh, you saw previously but they're not gaining that information by scraping the text off the page they're gaining it by scraping structured data that's embedded within the HTML of that page and using a, a browser plugin to sniff that data you can see the structured data that's embedded in, in that page in a, in a nice user-friendly format those with good eyesight will see there's a lot of references to schema.org uh, but we'll come back to schema.org in a moment another example is the Google knowledge graph which is using to drive various facilities um, or products within the the Google interfaces on the left there you've got the knowledge panel often seen supporting search results We've got a, a, a list of entities, as would be displayed on a, on a mobile device at the bottom there. The entities in this particular case are cinemas in Manchester. So if I'm mooring my barge in Manchester uh, this week, um, I've got a good choice of cinemas uh, that, that I could possibly attend. The bottom right is an answer panel. Uh, if a search identifies a particular entity, and this particular search is um, how high is Mount Everest so it identifies the attribute of that entity the answer is is very simple how high is Mount Everest 8,848 meters uh, top right is a traditional rich snippet which was the first application of, of, of this work where a result is enhanced with reviews ratings images etc etc and the top one on, on, on this display is a, is a, a featured result. Um, a featured result appears above the normal 10 links on, on a results page. And, and this is important, especially as we move into the, um, the world of voice-based assistance, because if, if those devices are looking for something to uh, speak to a user in answer to a question very often it's this featured result that um, that is used so when you talk into Alexa or Siri or similar devices uh, it, it is th those features results that um, very often are featured to use a phrase uh, this works equally well in the bibliographic world so it's an example here of the four hour chef uh, book um, which has got a rich snippet on the left with a, a star rating, uh, um, a entity display on the mobile device, and uh, a knowledge panel on the right hand side there. Um, all this is driven from data embedded in this page. This is the Goodreads page describing uh, that particular book, and using my sniffer again, you can see the structured data that's embedded within that page, and it's that that is used. Now that structured data is from the schema.org vocabulary, uh, a vocabulary that contains some two and a half thousand terms describing uh, everything from volcanoes to books to uh, tourist destinations to bank accounts. Uh, it's a general purpose vocabulary um, which is being followed by the major search engines and many others. So a question I, I'm often asked is, uh, well, that structured data is uh, basically a, a linked data environment. Uh, Bibframe is a linked data vocabulary. So how relevant is Bibframe outside the walls of the library? Well, unfortunately, it's not really relevant at all. And that's because those organizations such as Google are being, building functionality on top of 
the uh, uh, linked data they perceive are only really looking for um, schema.org uh, as a vocabulary. So give them BibFrame, they won't take much notice of it, if, if any notice of it at all. Um, uh, because they they want a consistent way of amassing data so that they can use it to help direct their users, people looking for things on the web. Talking of, of users, where are our users? Uh, as libraries and librarians, where are our users? Uh, and I'm not just talking about uh, students or members of the public uh, looking for uh, books or uh, articles. Uh, I'm talking about you. Where do you search for in bibliographic um, situations? Well, they're mostly out of our reach. They are searching in Google. They're, they're using Alexa, they're using Bing, they're using Siri, they're using Yahoo. They're, they're using uh, external to the library world discovery devices. So we, we can't directly influence, no matter how good your uh, OPAC or uh, library discovery interfaces, if they're not in it, it's not making any difference. So let's have a look at the entities in our world. So here's a very minimalistic uh, knowledge graph uh, with four entities in it, described using the BibFrame voc vocabulary. We've got a BibFrame work with a title of title, Tale of Two Cities. We've got a BibFrame instance associated with it with the same title. We've got a BibFrame person, Charles Diskin, Dickens, who's the author, and we've got a BibFrame place of, of Paris, where the, uh, which is one of the places that the book's about. So how do I get that into the world of Google and others? Google has got millions of entities in its knowledge graph, all, all related together in various ways, but they're related using the scheme and all vocabulary. So because they're not consuming BibFrame, the, these entities in our knowledge graph are just sat in isolation and have got no connection with, with anything else whatsoever. So what we need to be able to do is to add to our BibFrame based descriptions schema.org um, properties. So the bib framework as well as being the bib framework can also become a schema creative work. The bib frame instance would be a combination of a creative work which it is in, in the eyes of um, search engines etc as well as being a product. The book is a product in their eyes. Um, the person can become a schema person, the place can become a schema place and by providing that data it enables that those entities to be linked with the other entities in the world uh, wider world adding a global context to everything we produce not only do we say that the author of this book is a person called Charles Dickens they can recognize Charles Dickens as being a, a person of interest in the wider entity thing so that gives us a challenge uh, as, as the library community. We need to know what to do about this. We've got all this wonderful data internally. We've got the ability to describe that data, data using schema.org so it's understood by the, the, the wider um, world. But how do we get there? Well here's an example. This is a web page produced by the National Library Board of Singapore, who I had the pleasure of working with for um, many a year. And this, this web page is um, a replication, I think is the, the correct word, a replication of the full details page uh, of this particular item in their library catalogue. So they've replicated this static page with a finding the library link, which will take you back to the library catalogue. Embedded in that page is the schema.org description of the entities that that page describe, the book, the person, etc. Uh, and for those that are interested, if you like, look at the HTML directly, this is the uh, JSON-LD description in schema.org structured data of that particular book. So what's the results of this? So there are uh, 
a few hundred thousand of these. There's a few thousand of these pages uh, within um, their website. And if you look at the Google search console that describes the performance of that site, and this particular snapshot was taken for November um, last year. Uh, and in a month period, they had over one and a half million impressions. And in Google search interface terms, an impression is when one of those pages appears as a search result. And from those impressions, one and a half million of them, we got 61,000 click throughs to the page I just displayed, which gives you the ability as a user to click on into the library. That's uh, an average click through rate of 3.9%. And any search engine optimizer will tell you 3.9% is a good click through rate. Uh, the average position in search results is, is number 25, which says many of these results will appear in the top 10, etc. So what they've done is they've just put some static pages up. There's no search interface. There's no query interface of them other than Google crawling them and you'll be able to search within Google. So that has some impact. So in our world where we're actively doing good works with linked data and bid frame how ca how can we hitch schema.org onto the end of this we don't want to start a whole new process um, to open up our data to the wider world so this is the basis uh, solving that problem is the basis of a new w3c community group that i set up and chair bid frame to schema.org the idea being to create a reference mapping from bid frame 2.0 to schema.org and then develop uh, and share reference software implementations uh, to actually do that. Uh, the theory being, if we've got linked data in bib frame form it, and we've got an agreed way to then move on to schema.org, it should become a fairly simple process uh, to add on to the linked data pipeline in our environment. And, and to show some examples, recently this comparison view was added to the site where you can obtain a bibliographic record by lo uploading it or posting the code or s s searching for its URL or a, a Library of Congress record uh, and, and be able to see alongside the source bib frame uh, a combination of that bib frame and schema.org or the schema.org data. This is going to help us evolve the conversion uh, standards and g gain some agreement and uh, gain a little bit of a toe in the water introduction for people that are n new to this uh, area. So hopefully we will move things forward. So to sum up, we need to be visible to the world as libraries. It's our purpose in life. We need to get our internal link data right, which is obviously what a lot of the other presentations in this conference is all about. But we mustn't expect the rest of the world to use our vocabularies. They won't. We need to output the global de facto standard vocabulary, schema.org, as well as keeping our relevant detailed vocabularies. We make and we must make it easy and consistent for developers and implementers. So the mark to bib frame uh, conversion spectrum programs from the Library of Congress are a good foundation. And to take us on beyond that to schema.org is the bib frame to schema.org community group. And we need to participate. We need to uh, uh, agree. So uh, I hope you enjoyed this presentation. I'm hopefully enjoying my ca canal boat floating around uh, Cheshire in England. Uh, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the conference. Thanks again for the organisers for inviting me. If you have any questions, don't hesitate in providing them in the way they described. Uh, I'm sure they will get them t to me and I will re respond through the uh, organisation. Or you can contact me directly if you require. Thank you very much and goodbye.